So this is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Just admiring this Monstera Deliciosa. So much fruit on it. Uh, yep. I've spread this plant around a little bit. I need to spread it around some more. Uh, I'm gonna divide some bananas today. That's the kind of stuff I like to do. <laughs> I should probably have an online store, but then I'd have to like dedicate hours to, um, so the chachas are looking nice too. It's getting quite big. This one's okay too. I'd have to dedicate so much time to doing something I, I hate, and then I have such problems. And then it would take away, <laughs> take away from my uh, time in nature. I need to spend time out here with the birds and the bugs and the snakes, the critters. Makes me feel good. This uh, cashew is like looking good. This one over here is looking really good. These are cashews I planted last year. So last year's seedlings, but they're pretty, this one's pretty big. If we had gotten rain, it would have been huge, but they do well here. The cashews really do well here. They're super easy plant. You know, we're a biodynamic certified rare tropical fruit farm. Um, I grow rare aeroids, uh, rare house plants. Here's a seedling mango from last year. Um, not the biggest plant, but it's doing good. So we have to grow everything the same way and we basically are a closed loop system and I don't water anything out here. It's totally unnecessary here. Uh, I've been focusing on soil health, low nitrogen inputs uh, to build fungal matter. And we're still organic certified for a couple more months, but I'm not gonna continue being organic, USDA organic certified. I'm just gonna stick with my certification I believe in, which is biodynamics which is superior to organic certification. Uh, well, it's harder, it requires more stuff. They look at closely at animal husbandry and they strive for you to become a naturalized farm. Uh, hello, we're the here. Mm -hmm. These are Inga spectabilis seedlings. They do great without any water. They kind of looked a little haggard during the drought, but not as bad as this pomelo looked. Uh, and it looks great now. It looks like it's grown eight inches. We've been getting about two inches a day for days on end here. And we don't have any standing water issues. We used to when I first moved here and this was lawn. Um, So pretty, the birds, the birds that are here. And look at that, that looks gorgeous, right? I got these angel trumpets all on the right, but they're not very big yet. There's one right there. Um, You have to spend time out here. There's like a colony of monarchs that live here year round um, on this farm. And there's always bugs, different bugs. Uh, mosquitoes, of course. Uh, Vero Beach has these weird bugs, the noceums, only this is like the epicenter of where they live. It's like they're everywhere certain times of the year. And you have to have screen. 
I don't really believe in screen. It's made out of vinyl chloride, but I have to have it. So I get the whole plastic thing, but I try not to use too much plastic. I try to stay away from it. Um, so star fruit. I don't like star fruit, especially after I ate the Monstera Deliciosa. I haven't been able to eat a star fruit since then. It's so strange. Um, there's a Ross Sapote. I realize people really can't see where they are because I do this during my tours because I give farm tours. Um, that's how I meet people in Florida. There. <clears throat> Pretty sure this is a jumpa jack. It's all kinds of stuff in here. It's a Garcinia dulcis right here. It's looking good. Citrus. All grown the same way in our undisturbed orchard floor. I have a little footpath here. That's how I was able to come in here. I need to mow these footpaths. Giving tours, it's like people come by and it's like, and then I'm like, oh, don't step there. It's like, <laughs> you can't really see the path. So it makes sense to, I could put paths in here without damaging the system where I'm already walking. I'm sure it's not as good as a footpath, but People are paranoid of snakes. Uh, knock on wood, I've never uh, had a problem with snakes. And I used to walk these barefoot back when it was lawn. Now we have too many sticks. They poke through old people's skin too easy. And I stopped going barefoot out here, but I don't walk through the swamps when we had standing water <clears throat> in the summer. No, <laughs> you can't do that. I planted some little ebu out here, uh, finally. No, that's a, that's not, that's a, that's a jackfruit from our, our, our trees. This is a ebu. I planted it about, I don't know, three feet from this uh, camito, seed grown. They're both seed grown. It's a ingafuilii. This is a fruiting quimuck seed grown, but it uh, didn't hold any fruit this year, but our other grafted Quimuck tree fruited. Last year was the first year this fruited. It gave me one fruit to maturity. Um, our other Quimuck that fruits uh, is a different type. Came from Excalibur, the grafted tree, and it's got a lot of fruit on it. I'll go look at it. I've been looking at it a lot. I just want to look at this little, uh, look at that uh, tree aloe. It's doing good. The plumerias are looking good. Stuff grows so well here in Florida. It's uh, even my, uh, the heliconias I planted last winter during the drought, they survived the drought and they're starting to, now that we're getting rain, they're coming up good. There's another little ebu here. So that's the inga and then there's a, a Juicy Pearl Star album from Australia. There's a Garcinia macrophylla growing in the Heliconia. Gorgeous. It's supposed to be a really good Garcinia fruit. Um, this one suffered a little drought stress. It's not growing in the, it's got new leaves, thank God. But it's not growing directly in this Heliconia like the other one like half the size. Stuff does do better when you water it. Um, but it also becomes dependent on water. So I watered this licula palm. So that little seed grown cacao is like twice as big as the ones I didn't water. I'm not really in a rush to grow the plants big. 
That's like the only stuff I water. But, you know, because this stuff is near there, it's kind of considered watered. That's, I consider it watered. This is a canistel. Did not fruit this year. Um, flowered like crazy, but none of our canistel fruited this year. I think the freeze had something to do with that, followed by the drought, but the drought doesn't seem to bother them. Um, it's a big achacha there. Yeah, people seem to want to learn, but they don't. They look on Facebook for inspiration, and really, they sh people should be getting out into the nature in Florida and looking at um, what's going on, and really asking themselves why they ask. What do I do about this pest? What do I do about this? What do I do about this? How often should I water? And ask that to the plants while you're on the tour. I mean, really. It just like dumbfounds me when I listen to people trying to piece together how to grow a plant. <clears throat> Back when food was medicine, the indigenous people would go into the, the into nature and collect the medicine and bring back to the other people, and they understood. We need to work with nature in order to heal ourselves. But now it's like. It seems everyone just, I don't know, they, they want to know, they want, they want to know piece by piece. Like, what do I do about the, the weeds? What do I do about the bug? What do I do about the, the nitrogen? What do I do about the micros? I mean, ask your, ask those questions while you're walking through uh, a beautiful uh, native park or, you know, a park with native plants. And I know that those indigenous plants, they eradicate from those plants, so they do well too. So it just, I don't know. There's two types of people that come here for a tour. It's the ones that ask, what do you do about the bugs? For example, on your uh, sugar apples, because I guess people can't fruit them or grow them because they get bugs. People can't fruit or grow uh, guavas without bugs. And it's like, well, we don't have them. We don't, we don't have any problem. So uh, I think it's the piecing together the snap-on agriculture methods they perfected. <clears throat> and ignored nature completely. Completely. I don't know. Just putting this place on the market and listening to what, or, you know, reading what people think they sh could do here. I could do an agriculture, so biodynamic school. What does that exactly does that mean? I think people need to spend half their time walking through park land and asking the questions they would ask somebody on a farm and then look at the trees. I mean, then the only thing that we got from the indigenous American people is three sisters. It's so pathetic. Oh, okay. So the pathetic that we we diminished it to corn, pea, and what's the other thing? <laughs> I can't even think of it. When in actuality, it's uh, all plants are sisters. When you go into nature, they're all growing up against each other. I don't know. We need to have a radicalization of our... Um, radical change to our agricultural systems back to nature-based systems. I mean, that's the whole purpose of biodynamic is to, cr to uh, create a system that is uh, 
run by nature. You present it to them and they kind of ignore it. <clears throat> They'll buy it and start their own school and start having to rely on more and more inputs. Yeah, I should have a online store to sell my seeds and my fruit, but I don't have time in a day to do what I like, which is to walk through nature and do farm labor work, divide bananas. I don't think this place is built yet, so I'm still building it. So these installs, they think they can do in like, I don't know, two weeks or a month or whatever. Uh, this is a never ending install at six years and I'm still not there. Install meaning dividing plants and planting more and learning more. There's our Queen Mock. This fruit's good and looking good, baby. Mm -hmm. oh, my favorite fruit. I'm so excited about this. I have not eaten enough of these to make myself sick. Last year we only got five fruit. This fruit, this tree, I've been trying to grow this fruit, this tree for 10 years. I've had that seed grown tree for 10 years. And I planted it in the lawn because I used to do lawn and wood chips and didn't water it though. And it survived and growed up and um, I learned the wood chips and sand and trees. You needed something, I needed something more. So I discovered my zebu cows and I let the nature in. I gave nature front row seats to what I was growing. <clears throat> I tapped into the nature is what it is. Really don't need to know anything. You just have to uh, trust in nature and uh, just do some minor inputs of manures, BD 500. And stuff the system. I sprayed the hell out of this stuff with all kinds of concoctions I had invented. So much so that I have PTSD from having to spray too much. So this pond has the, the wood ducks are back, but I don't see any in there right now. I hear them. No, those are chickens. <laughs> Big difference, the neighbor's chickens. Yeah. There's our raw sapote that always fruits, but it got fried by the freeze this year, but I see it's coming back on the freezed branches. Doesn't look very happy. Never grew from since the freeze. This one's doing much better. It's amazing this little tiny jackfruit tree has fruit on it. Um, this great big uh, ice cream bean. It's Inga Vera though, which is not a very good variety. I've had this variety, I did not like it. Um, but I've had Fuilii and I loved it. So I know that Spectabilis, probably Cinnamonia will be good. Those are our other three varieties we have. I've been waiting for this to get closer. It's not ready yet. The asparagus is doing good. So this is seed grown asparagus and um, it does good uh, here. You just can't remove the top of it. But there's a bunch in there. Um, it's just now starting up. 
That's it. Really wasn't doing anything during the drought, but the drought didn't seem to affect it. These plants are all used to changes in in their uh, watering schedule. So they do just fine with drought. This ginger, this torch ginger that I divided during the drought probably wasn't the best idea, but it's doing okay. It's coming back. Last year it was like 10 feet, but the freeze knocked it back. That's what that dead stuff is. And then I took about half of it out, more than half, I think, and spread it around, which I sh maybe I should have <laughs> waited till it was raining. But I thought for sure it would rain because it's never been drought here before. So here's our purple asparagus. Um, okay. So I'm going to do vegetables this year right here. There's asparagus all along here. The edge of here. one there they do good anyway this is florida natural farming at frog valley tropical fruits farm i hope you have a beautiful day <laughs>